Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, <laughs> and I know I've been talking a lot about the internet browser controversies recently, and it's important to me because, as you know, I like talking about computer malware, virus investigating, and computer privacy and safety on this channel, okay? And uh, Google Chrome is one of those uh, browsers that is quite possibly the most popular browser in the world, okay? There are unborn fetuses, I would assume, right now, in the womb, browsing their first crappy article through Google Chrome right now, okay? Uh, I know that's a bit of hyperbole, but what isn't a hyperbole is Google's IP protection. Now, this is something you might have heard from uh, a channel that's in the sphere as well, too. Somebody known as Mental Outlaw. Kenny also covered this as well, but it's been in my radar as well, too. Just because a lot of big companies these days, Google, Apple, well, really anyone in the space, has now started to basically sell you privacy, okay? Apple is kind of one of these companies that's like privacy focused first. And uh, they started what I would call the first Trojan horse into, uh, I guess, selling this privacy to people. And it was called Safari Private Relay. So if you pay for iCloud, or you pay for any of their like subscription services, you can actually route your iPhone's uh, traffic through Apple's private relays. So the entire idea for this is to mask your IP address and prevent cross-site tracking, which is a pretty serious thing. I've always talked about browser fingerprinting in my past, okay? If you touch a website, for instance, I connected to, uh, I don't know, uh, iplocation.net. IPlocation.net tells me exactly what it pulls out of my system from my IP address, okay? So this is my IP address. It's hopefully blurred for you. Um, and of course it gives the city that I live in. And of course my postal code. A postal code is kind of like a zip code for Americans watching. I think the rest of the world uses postal codes. It's like the metric system, okay? Everyone uses it, but goddamn Americans. <laughs> now, I love you Americans. I love it a lot, okay? But trust me, feet, inches, yards, miles, it'll never hit me. Like, like centimeters and meters and kilometers and so on and so forth. But that general location, the actual postal code it gives me, is in the city of Hamilton, pretty much downtown, between Corktown and Delta East. Now, I've never been in this part of Hamilton in my life. And generally, an IP address gives you the closest approximate location, not to your address, mind you, to a data center that is obviously connected to an internet service provider. Now, of course, it's linking me to Hamilton, which I don't live in the city. I, I, I live close, but I don't live anywhere in that immediate region. So again, IP addresses have gotten the sort of like weird, mystifying like allure to them over the years. People think that just because you get somebody's IP address, you know exactly what their actual home location is. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The reality is IP addresses pretty much just link to the actual data center uh, that, uh, or the data point that you're communicating from your house to the broader internet of large is, is, is about the most simplest way that I can put it. An IP address doesn't actually give your exact location. So whenever somebody threatens you on the internet and says, I just grabbed your IP. Ooh, I know where you live. You can call them out on their bullshit, okay? If they tell you that I know your IP, it's 192.168.01, then you know they're full of crap because that's an, that's an internal IP address. Now, the reason why I'm worried about it as a Canadian is there are two types of IP addresses. There's the static IP address and the dynamic IP address. You want the dynamic IP address because it changes every time you pull out your uh, modem and you put it back in. If you have a static IP address, like pretty much everyone in Canada, then it never changes at all. So one of the reasons why I use like a VPN service or really any VPN service is to basically mask an IP address. And that's literally because the moments that I stream, some scumbag will have my IP address that they grab from some peer-to-peer -peer game uh, back in the day, like Grand Theft Auto Online, or, you know, just it's floating around on the internet, it's probably in a dock somewhere, and they'll shut down my router as I'm streaming. It's annoying, I don't enjoy it, but uh, that's one of the reasons why masking an IP makes a lot of sense, at least for me. For the average consumer, it's not really the end of the world if somebody gets your IP address. Do you know that every time you connect to a fucking web page, they get your IP address? It's how these IP location websites work, all right? Anyways, now that I've given you the lesson on IP addresses and why you probably shouldn't be crapping yourself wholesale, is because beyond just your IP address, your browser gives a lot more information about you than you would think. 
For instance, it knows that I'm on Lunix. It knows the, the fork of Chrome that I'm using. Uh, it hasn't identified Brave, but it does say Chrome because I'm using Chromium. It's identified the screen size of the window that I'm using. And of course, if I'm on desktop, mobile, or even a tablet. So again, all of this tiny information that it grabs off of me, it can all be amalgamated and used by trackers out in the field to basically figure out who is who. So your browser fingerprint, when you ping through various websites, they're loaded with trackers, okay? Trackers are effectively tools that are used to scan what browser fingerprint connects to what. So the thing is, if you create a unique browser fingerprint, which most usually are, even if you hide your IP address or you hide your name and all that sensitive information you think of, you, the profile for your browser is still the same no matter where you go. So again, sites are filled with trackers and some of the largest networks are Google, Facebook, Adobe, Amazon, Oracle, Tower Data, Rubicon, AppNexus. Now this number has changed a fair bit, but Google is still very much at the top. And uh, they know basically what fingerprint is going where. They have a rough idea of somebody's profile on the internet, even if they don't have your name, your number, your IP address, so on and so forth. That's just how this works. So again, if you're talking about somebody tracking you, they're probably the one company that's number one in the field, okay? Them, Amazon, Facebook, so on and so forth. Now, recently, Google Chrome has brought up this IP masking shit in their Google Chrome browser, right? So for instance, if you use Google Chrome, they wanna actually implement. So what's happening now is Google is now the next company after Apple that's selling you privacy by implementing something known as IP protection or NAT catcher. Now, interestingly enough, reading through this, we're gonna go through, it's a bit dry, but please bear with me. As browser vendors make efforts to provide their users with additional privacy, browser vendors being Firefox, Brave, I think Opera GX as well, a lot of browsers provide privacy features. The user's IP address continues to make it feasible to associate users' activities across origins that otherwise wouldn't be possible. So that's true. The IP address is just one identifier in like hundreds of browser identifiers. So yeah, it's actually true how Google is saying it, but it's a bit, uh, they're not really focusing on what I just told you a couple minutes ago. This information can be combined over time to create a unique persistent profile and track an activity across the web, which represents a threat to their privacy. Absolutely true. Unlike third-party cookies, there's no straightforward way for users to opt out of this kind of covert tracking. And that's also true. Using things like incognito mode or do not track mode or even hardened browsers just changes up your fingerprint a little bit. Think about it like this. If you're going to a website that 100 people connect to every day and you wanna be hidden amongst them, 99 of them are just using Google Chrome downloader from the internet. You're the only one with a different hardened browser. Well, your fingerprint is going to be uniquely identifiable in a list. So even if you try to hide your traffic or your internet or your profile, you will still somewhat be shared by trackers in the internet of large. That's why privacy by blending in is better than like, like privacy with obscurity because with obscurity, you stand out a lot more than anyone else. So again, what they have basically done is introduced IP masking into their browser. So how this works is basically browsers are moving against cross-site tracking. Chrome is actually phasing out third-party cookies and limiting fingerprinting, which is great. One way to limit is by limiting sources of identifiable information such as IP addresses. An IP is an effective cross-site identifier as it is highly unique, relatively stable, cheap to collect. And if you live in the US, if you feel like your IP is compromised and you know you have a dynamic provider, pull out your modem, stick it back in, it'll change. Boom, you're good, you're gravy. So what they've done over here is introduced a proxy. Uh, I guess you could kind of think of it like a VPN, but basically you are tunneling information through Google to basically mask your IP address, which is the same way that Safari does it with like the private Apple relays. You're basically routing yourself through company proxies. So what they have done is they basically monopolized who gets to look at your data. So at the end of the day, there's a million questions to ask, right? If you're routing your information with Google, right? You have to wonder to yourself, who's handling HTTPS? 
the browsers, the proxy servers, so on and so forth. See, what it feels like to me is Google has realized this is valuable information, and so is Apple, so is a bunch of these other companies that are now selling you privacy, and uh, they're just saying, route your information through us, it's totally cool, okay? We're not gonna look into your information, pinky promise, but they're also limiting competition from looking into your traffic as well, too. These guys are gonna be the sole arbiter of all information that is sent around the world. And again, through the Google Chrome browser, and this is just an experiment, but again, experiments, when successful, become pretty widespread in the internet of large. So what they've done is they said that IP-based geolocation is used by a swath of services within proxy third-party traffic to comply with local laws. So again, their privacy proxy will assign IP addresses that represent the user's course location. So when you're browsing, for instance, me in Hamilton, it might route me to like maybe another city or in that same city, but just a different centralized location for their data centers as well. So again, nothing so overly different than what my ISP is doing anyways. Remember, IPs do not give your home address, okay? They don't even give close to the home address in some cases. So according to when people expect this to show up, it's somewhere around January 2024. So about a month from now, we expect this to be showing up in Chrome 122. Now, at the end of the day, I don't say that this is necessarily wrong. Because at the end of the day, what Google is wanting is for this to be opt-in, meaning that if you want to add extra privacy, you can. Now, initially, this will be opt-in, but Google does have an intention to make this a default setting down the road, where they write, hey, we plan to publish more details on our timeline. We expect to launch IP protection as an opt-in feature initially, which will later become the default setting. And if it's one thing we know about default settings and the antitrust lawsuits that Google themselves are facing is when something is defaulted, people will never go and uncheck it, okay? They, nobody wants to dig through settings, and especially when it comes to IP masking, which the way that they describe it, most people will keep it on without ever realizing that, hey, it's just letting one group tunnel me instead of, I guess, everyone else, which for some people might be better or not, but at the end of the day, you are actually trusting the world's most invasive company on the internet with your information that's being sent all across the world, okay? So again, ladies and gentlemen, privacy and safety on the internet is something that I'm very much paramount on. And one of the best ways that you can defend yourselves is quite literally by just blending in, all right? I mean, instead of using Google Chrome's browser, which one day wants to funnel everyone through their proxies, through their services for, again, God knows what reason. Remember, this is like Google's biggest moneymaker, right? Playing with your personal information. And if you feel like you don't want to be a contributor to that, then you should absolutely think of maybe switching to other browsers. Maybe at this point, I'm already going to switch off from Brave to like something else. I might even just go back to Firefox. I may go to like an entirely different browsing engine at this point, because it gets to me that this whole situation has become shadier over and over as the years go by. And what shows up in Google Chrome, I have to basically sit there at goodwill with every other Chromium-based uh, developer and just go, maybe they'll eliminate this feature, maybe they won't. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, routing your information through Google, <laughs> your internet information for the sake of privacy is, uh, is a little bit wild, okay? It's a little bit insane. But ladies and gentlemen, we've entered a world where companies who once openly invaded you have realized that people do care about their privacy. So let's let the biggest tech firms in the world sell you privacy, which may or may not really even be true privacy, which is it really better if one group is just looking at you versus two or three other on the internet? I don't know, it's up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't trust the future of, of Chrome right now, but um, I guess that's, uh, I guess most people are kind of feeling that way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, just like if you dislike, ah, I'm out.